Why are they always leaving? It's a question that's often asked in our small country towns. The song features in a musical play that's part of a project called Small Towns, Big Picture. A project that over eight months brought together five small town communities, a university, various schools and a group of artists. This video film follows the development of Small Towns Big Picture and explores the lessons learned in managing and nurturing a program that used various forms of art to complement research and community development. Lessons and experiences that are valuable to anybody or organisation that's involved in helping to build community. task has been to work with communities and find ways to assist communities to do whatever we are going to try and do to, um, to survive. I don't think it's a mystery. The project leader was Dr Maureen Rogers, working with La Trobe University's Centre for Sustainable Regional Communities. The concept was to provide people with a toolkit for measuring the health of their community. What we're really trying to do is develop benchmarks of sustainability. So a community that wants to um, develop itself and be sustainable both socially, environmentally and economically, they need tools with which to measure where, where they're at. Um, so there's a notion of sort of like developing a sustainability dashboard, a suite of indicators that, uh, that give more information than just your economic profile. The centre had already established a relationship with a number of small towns in central Victoria as the contracted administrator to a project called Building a Future for the Country. So Maureen presented her ideas to people from these small towns. But the response was less than enthusiastic. All of us on our committee found it very difficult. Um, you, you felt sort of as if you were dragged in unwillingly in a way and yet you wanted to be there because you could see a potential for helping your town. There was also the concern in some of the towns that Maureen's project could increase the already heavy load on community volunteers. My big concern is yet again um, another focus group. The small towns seem to be lumbered with lots of focus groups or trying to get focus groups together on these issues and the same people are being asked to be volunteers yet again and my big concern is the small number of people who are in the focus groups or you know, being involved getting burnt out. It seemed like an idea going nowhere until Maureen talked to Judy Spokes from the Cultural Development Network. And the Cultural Development Network's point of view in processes like this is that by working alongside artists, by incorporating artists and their creative skills and their communication and community connecting skills as part of um, broader community building projects and social action projects, you can get better results, people have a better time, more people get involved and the results can be expressed in meaningful ways to people, not just in more traditional a report on a, on a bookshelf that may certainly influence a, go a government policy perhaps, but may not generate real income, uh, real benefits back to the towns. By using this strategy, Judy also saw this as a way of engaging local government in the project. When you look at the aims of the program and the aims of what La Trobe Uni is trying to do, it almost sits exactly with what local government's thinking is. At this stage, arts worker Malcolm McKinnon played a key role. Essentially developing an initial description of the project that we could use to attract some money to get the ball rolling, and then establishing a local reference group and consolidating some local interest in the project and then working to develop a brief for artists and to get artists on board. Advertisements went into local papers and on request details were sent out. Artists were sought for three aspects of the project. These were social well-being, an ecological footprint and network mapping. But it appears that ads for artists aren't all that common in country newspapers. I've never seen an ad for a job for an artist in the local paper ever. 
And so I thought, artist, yes, well, I'm an artist and I'm a sort of technical person and because it was about the network mapping that I chose to do, I thought that um, a website would translate this networking um, very well because that's what the web is about, um, networks. Uh, and that's why I was excited about it. Hmm. Anne was one of the successful applicants. The others were playwright Craig Christie and a team of artists from northeastern Victoria. Work commenced in February 2002 with a two-day live-in workshop at Malden. Who were the contacts? What are the dates? A number of people attended, including Maureen, Judy, Malcolm, community representatives, the artists, and local arts administrators. Important tasks included trying to simplify the language used to describe the project elements and work out just how the whole program was going to work. It seems to me we have to be able to articulate the other two projects in that kind of a way where the people from communities can go back and say this is what we're doing. There is, I think we've got, I've got something and others I've, I'm still keen to uh, take on board what I can uh, pick out of the bones if you might say. Yeah. So is it that you're not clear about what the outcomes uh, are supposed to be? I'm pretty clear on the outcome. I'm not clear how we can utilise it. Right, OK. Yes. Right. Yeah, so the level of dissemination isn't... An important outcome of the workshop was the establishment of the steering group that included community members. This group met monthly. The North East team worked on the concept of sending out postcards explaining the energy footprint concept and inviting people to respond artistically on each card. The energy footprint task involved exploring the amount of tree cover needed to offset greenhouse gas emissions for each community. Response from the managing group to the postcards was quite positive and a series of school workshops were planned. But eventually the long travelling distance, together with existing teaching commitments, meant that it became impractical for the three artists to continue with the project. Anne Maloney's project involved producing a website illustrating the connections between community groups and organisations. This information was gathered by sending out requests through the town representatives. It was then up to Anne to fashion the responses into a graphic form. Craig Christie's work started in April with the community cohesion focus groups. People were asked to respond to a series of nine words and give a rating from one to five for their community. And discussion needed little encouragement. People come to these towns visiting on occasions. If they like the place, if they feel good about it, they might retire here and keep the place going. You don't have to worry about locking your back door. Um, uh, yeah, I. I had a I had a jag and they offered me poxy trading money on it and somebody said leave it in the yard and somebody will steal it. I left it in the yard for about eight weeks, it just sitting there unopened and nobody ever stole it. I, I put the keys in it and left it for another month and nobody still stole it. And the go-getter say, oh you can come and join us if you like, but they say it in a very matter-of-fact way which is condescending in a, in a manner of speaking to those that have all these insecurities and you have this massive void so it is that lifestyle they, they come here and they see lifestyle i think that's what what's attracting you know darsford people to mm. buying here is, is a lifestyle in the weekenders mm -hmm. they look here they say oh you amble down to the shop you have a chat to the the milk bar, you know, person who's known you know and, and you meet people on the way and you don't get that in Melbourne or no. Dalesford because... I remember when they my parents up. moved here when I was two months old, so that was a long time ago, and my dad tried to get involved with counselling, you know, if he wasn't happy with something he'd go down to the meetings and that, and he'd been living here for something like 30 something years at that stage and someone called him a blow-in, well, you know, how long does it take to become a, a community a member of the community, you know, and parades and things. So I think the primary school was really good about it. They endorsed a lot of creativity within the children, but I think for older people, 
or teenagers, there's really not that much offered for them. <laughs> but most people, yeah, don't really know who I am, so they just don't even see me really. Like, I suppose if I played football and was in the CFA and in the Lions Club. Apart from providing data indicating social cohesion for the various communities, the focus groups also provided the basis for Craig Christie's theatrical production. Um, my job is not to interpret really, it's really to report and reflect. And uh, it was just an interesting experience to, to sit back and listen to people. And uh, not to ask too many questions, but give but because of the way the workshops are, are organised, just to sit back and listen to what people have to say and try and get the common experiences and pick up their stories from that. Taking advantage of the time he was spending travelling, Craig fashioned these stories into a series of songs for his production. You can't just turn up and start messing around with the way we do the things we do round here. It's not the way we do it in this town. But da, 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 Coming up with key phrases for a start that tends to be the most important. Um, each of the songs would have started with just a phrase, like a phrase that I would have, in every case, has, has occurred to me while I've been driving around the place in between because there's been a lot of driving involved in this. Um, just a musical phrase which I'd be singing over and over, drag out the tape, put that down, and would grow outwards from that. Um, the musical styles have ended up being very eclectic. <laughs> um, so I've got a Calypso song in there, I don't know why, it just seemed to suggest itself. I felt also because some of the, the material might be construed and I think misconstrued as being critical, I my intention wasn't to criticise but simply to reflect things that I saw and so to deflect the sense that it might be being too critical, I've used more whimsical or amusing musical styles to try and offset that. When they asked for my opinion, look what I did instead of keeping my big mouth shut and just nodding my head. I made a good suggestion when I thought it was okay and then I kept repeating it so they'd see things my way and they said, what? You want to do what? You want to change what? I don't believe I'm hearing this, you better sit and listen Cause it's not the way we do it in this town You can't just budge in and start messing around with the way we do the things we do the I was more nervous about presenting material from this show to its audience than I think I've ever been about presenting anything. I've had, a, a, I suppose, time to, to worry about it, and also because the compounding problems of trying to organise everything, all the administration that's going behind it, you tend to lose sight of what you're actually there for. Originally I was employed or commissioned as a writer first and foremost, and this sort of gets back to doing that, and to find from the audience that, yeah, they understand it, and um, I've done all right by them so far. It has been enormously encouraging. Yeah, um, it was great. <laughs> I'm a happy boy right now, yeah. Once Craig's script was complete, the next stage was to audition for singer-actors. The big challenge here was to get people to come. It's really providing some challenges in terms of making sure that all the right people know. And despite our very best efforts of you know, getting information out there and things like that, a constant cry is always, oh, you know, we don't get enough information and we aren't told enough. But um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, you've only got what's available and the best thing still is the uh, Bush Telegraph. You know, pe word of mouth is the way to get information out there. But of course, the people who are spreading that information, you've got no control over what exactly is the information they're spreading. And I've um, even this week been dealing with some misinformation that's been circulating about you know what the project is and what's going on. So uh, yeah, it's a fraught business. I don't know what the answers are apart from perseverance and um, I mean obviously that the things that do work are getting key people who are you know, enthusiastic and well connected enough to make the difference. The godsend that I've had for particularly around this region here is um, is Faye White's involvement. She's just so well connected and so well respected. And now that she understands what the project is and what I'm doing, um, getting her support has been just vital. 
It was really important to do the groundwork in, in locating people in each place who, um, who might be interested to go. People don't respond to ads uh, as a rule. They respond to word of mouth and story and to people. I like it here. Why would I want to live anywhere else? And it's good to be able to provide some stability for the kids. Some of them to come back to once they leave. Got in your mind. Can I have a volunteer to be a ball? Okay, ball, and you're the bat, you're chasing her. Go. <laughs> and write on the piece of paper just a paragraph introducing that character. So, for After instance, 11 who's arrived in this town that we know? Roxy! Roxy! Yeah. My childhood. Half a moment spent with. But then he relaxes down again. Yeah. Yes, I heard. He's in Trev's class at school. It's him I've come to see about, actually. Oh. Yep, see, I'm coach of the under 16 footy team. And I was wondering if he'd be interested. Got the talent. Got the people. I think if we've got we've got a representative, at least one representative from each town in the casts, and um, we we need to balance that with making sure we've got the best possible cast to do, to do the show justice. So those sort of things got to be taken into consideration now. Rehearsals were organised over a series of three weekends. And nothing's going right where we are. Then Terry, yes, everything's all right where we are. And things are just all right. I'm staying right. And nothing's going right. There's a really nice club. While the musical production was evolving, there was a new face on the scene. Andrea Hicks, herself a community artist, had been employed as a much needed coordinator for the project. An important first step for Andrea was to set up a new approach for the Energy Footprint project. And rather than advertise, the decision was to seek and employ a team of local artists. I was looking for artists that were uh, very professional in their field of, of art. So I needed, um, I needed professionals on board, but more than that I needed artists that had an interest in the community and had an interest in uh, working with people as opposed to just doing their own work in their, in their studios. The selected artists included photographer Donna Bailey, printmaker Tiffany Titchell and potter Judy Lorraine. In addition, another local artist, Anna Ashton, was employed to work on street banners promoting the project. All of these activities were to form the basis for a series of school workshops that community members were also invited to. The banner making workshops involved students illustrating a number of the words used in the social cohesion focus groups. Each session ran for a full day with up to 30 banners being designed and decorated by the students. With the energy footprint workshops, first there was discussion about the impact of energy use. Carbon, every time you turn your lights on and use energy, we're putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, right? We need trees 
and plants <coughs> to absorb that carbon and convert it's it back. Tin. It's actually bigger than this. The particular art process was discussed. Then the students worked on their own images. The group sizes were quite large and the pace was often fast and furious. The results that were produced in such a short time were quite a tribute to the small town's big picture team. You, it's very, very difficult, and I'm sure all the artists would say this, it's, it's very, very difficult to work with large numbers to produce, to, to get an outcome. You can't expect to start something at nine in the morning and finish at five at night and have something to show for it that's, that's really great. And when that, it, part of the reason I think I had quite good outcomes was the medium I used. I, I was, um, uh, it was good that I, I decided to do pinholes. We had considered using disposable cameras and a couple of other things and that didn't come to pass and it's actually really good that it didn't because we just would not have achieved outcomes within that space of a day. Because remember I'm only putting little thin strips in the tin. The schools willingly took part in the project, but it did mean fitting the exercise into an already busy schedule. And that's the only thing really, the fact that we probably needed a little bit more time um, and forewarning about when certain things were going to happen. But that is the smallest and minutest criticism because what our kids got out of it um, and what our school got out of it was fantastic, even for myself. Well, about in I... terms of actually having practising artists in the school, you can't underestimate the power that has for the children and the tangible and the intangible interactions as well. So often there were parents who would comment about what the children had done at home, like for the pinhole cameras, and said, I want to know how to make one of those. So even that really brief session that they had enabled them to develop skills that they thought were transferable and, and wanted to pursue. Another welcome outcome from the school workshops was that by using local artists, it demonstrated that the community had a wealth of talent that can be used by the schools. This project really showed that to me. It showed me that we had so many untapped, um, wonderful resources and people in the community that we should be using. And, you know, for me, that's, that's where we're going to go. Another group that became involved with the towns at this stage were a number of photography students from La Trobe University. As part of a photojournalism assignment, the students photographed either the school workshops or the towns themselves. One thing I found photographing the town was that my interest in people is always for those who are a little bit outside the norm. And so I'd see someone, I'd say, oh, that person looks interesting, stop, you know, or whatever. Um, and I'm wondering whether the final result, the town people will look at it and go, you know, they've picked out all <laughs> the eccentrics. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that don't really represent our town, yeah. you know. Well, um, I, I was doing the same thing with buildings because I was finding yeah. all these lovely derelict buildings yeah. and yeah. ruins, and I was just I kept and finding myself to attracted to them. The nice it's not, it's not the round of dickety. It's fascinating for the towns because some are quite often anonymous. So to complement the energy footprint workshops. Energy usage surveys were circulated by local paid workers in each of the communities. Plus, an energy information day was held in the Denali Town Hall. The presentations were impressive. Only problem was that only a few of the bums on the seats belonged to the target audience, the community people from the five towns. Well, how did it work out? I mean, I just didn't, we just didn't get the people that we would want it. I mean, I advertised it as much as I could. Um, we probably got about eight people from 
the, com com the communities but not representative from all of the communities so we really couldn't go down the planning path that I had sort of potentially hoped. Well, I think it's always good to see a big crowd, but you know, it's good to see some people here, and as long as they hear the message and, and can spread that amongst their community, that's the only way we're going to make these things grow. And I think it's uh, events like this, the first events like this, might be um, reasonably poorly attended. I don't think that really matters. I think the word, you know, it's just like a pebble in a pond. That we'll, we'll, we'll get increased numbers as time goes on, and as people see that there are real opportunities for them to do things. The major event for the project was a series of exhibitions and performances in each of the towns. And in spite of some last minute, very creative promotion, nobody really knew how many people to expect. successful night. It was very exciting to have a lot of people here. Every town needs a bit of that. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and it could only happen in small communities. I just thought it was a brilliant production of a, a great coming together of people and a celebration of um, small towns. I just thought it was terrific. Knocked me out. Um, I thought it was real cool because all the like all the young kids and everybody were um, joining in for it so and that's what made it really cool. Everybody liked it. They, they, they enjoyed it so much, didn't they? And it, it, it came from within the community rather than something being imposed on it. That was, that was just so especially lovely. It is more than a pastime. It is much more thy thought. It is more than the way this town can show off just who we are. It is more like religion. 
now it's up to us to take the play, um, perhaps create some more music, uh, some more dialogue, scripting. Everyone plays a part. You can feel the excitement at the bounce of the ball. There's no way that you cannot answer the call. How many chances does a man get to be... It's about the art of engaging community. I mean, what the artists in this project have shown us is that cultural vitality is as vital to building a sustainable future as economic, social and environmental factors. Every person you meet will want to welcome their favourite son Every woman will want you, strangers buy you a beer Well, we've got five much more engaged communities. We've got some initial benchmarks of sustainability and uh, we're now really ready to start taking some actions that are going to lead these communities towards a sustainable future. Because you're part of the game How many chances does a man get to be a real hero? To charge into battle to know that it's just do or die You can win against the odds You can take your true place right up there with the gods just three weeks after the big event, we had our own community visioning workshop here in Denali. And out of that's come quite an exciting project that we're working on. That could mean that we're looking after our own energy supply, plus creating a number of jobs.